Following on from the interquartile range and the lower quartile and the upper quartile and the median, we have percentiles. Now percentiles are worked out in exactly the same way as the median, the upper quartile and the lower quartile is worked out. Okay. Percentiles, you sometimes might hear them referred to in, say, dealing with IQ. You might hear, oh, that person has a such and such an IQ and that person's IQ is in the top 5% or they're in the 95th percentile, okay? If you hear about people being in the top 5% or being in the 95th or above the 95th percentile, that's exactly the same description. That's the same thing. It means that you're in, you're over the top 95%, okay? Which is the top 5%. So there's a dual way to talk about that cohort of people who would be in the top 5%. You either say they are the top 5% or they are above the 95th percentile okay so how do we work it out what is the percentile well it's a fraction simple as that it's a fraction if it's a percentile straight away does an inference of percent and every single percent is out of 100 all right but what the percentiles do is they allow me to compare data values to the full ranked set of values so for example if i was to give a maths test tomorrow to the first years and i was to take all their scores and i was to rank them in order now the key thing here and same with the median is that we have to rank them in order so when you take about the lower quartile the upper quartile and the median they're all values of ranked data same with the percentiles the data must be ranked set from the lowest value to the highest value in incremental order okay increasing order so if i took the say the set of scores from a first year maths test tomorrow and i rank them all in order all right if i wanted to find out the 65th percentile well, then I just get 65% of the number of students in the class. So say there's 30 students in the class, then it's 65% of 30, which will obviously, in this case, give me a decimal. Let me just get my calculator. So 65% of 30 would be 19.5. Now, it's the same as the median and the same as the lower quartile and the same as the upper quartile. If the percentile fraction of the number of data points in your set gives you a decimal, then you take the next data point. So I'm getting 19.5 as the 65th percentile of the 30 students, which means I'm going to take the 20th value. And the 20th value then will be the value that marks the 65th percentile. And then values above that will be above the 65th percentile. Values below that will be below the 65th percentile. What about 40% of 30 students? Now, 40% of 30 students works out as being 12. So in that case, if your percentile again gives you a whole number, then you take the 12th and the 13th value, add them together, get their mean, and that would be the value that would represent the 40% percentile. So again, scores below that would be below the 40th percentile, and scores above would be above the 40th percentile. It's really a very simple thing to do. There are 99 percentiles in a data set. Does that make perfect sense? We don't go up with the 100th because that's at the very top. There's 99 percentiles, 99 marks going from P1 to P99. The lower quartile is 25th percentile. The median is the 50th percentile. The upper quartile is the 75th percentile. Why do we not talk about the 100th percentile? Because that's at the very top. That's one. Okay, that's at the top. So we go from one to 99. So just keep in mind the 25th percentile, that's 25 over 100. That's a quarter. That's the lower thing. Uh, 75 percent is three quarters that's the higher quartile and then 50 percent is a half which is the median so example find p30 and p80 for the following data set now look at the data set that's given the first thing we've got to do is to check and see is this data ranked in order 98 92 95 88? no this is raw data that's been collected okay so what we've got to do now is we've got to take these numbers and put them into incremental order starting with the smallest going to the biggest and when i do that i get ranked data from 65 to 98 so straight away i could give the range if i wanted to the range here would be 33 okay if i was asked to do so but i'm not master the percentile here so firstly rank the data 65 to 98 now i want p30 so what is p30 well first of all how many data points in this particular collection? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15. So there are 15 data points here. Okay. Now, what's P30? P30 is 30% of 15. Okay. And 30% of 15 is 0.3 by 15. And 0.3 by 15 is 4.5. 
which means I take the fifth value. So what's the fifth value? One, two, three, four, five. So that there would be the mark of the 30th percentile. What about P80? P80 is exactly the same. It's 80% because it's a percentile of the 15 data points in my set. And 0.8 multiplied by 15 comes out as 12. Now in that case, because the fraction of 15 gives me a whole number, I have to take the 12th and the 13th value and give you their mean. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So these two. And in the middle of there is 97. So what does all that mean? Here's what it means. Anybody who scored above 97 in this test is in the upper 20% of the class, or what we would say is above the 80th percentile. See? And anybody who scores over, what did we say the fifth value was? Anybody who scores over 92 is in what we would say that above the 30th percentile. Okay? So that's the way it works. Be in the top 70% or they would be in the... Um, they would be in the 30th percentile mark, put it that way. Okay, anybody that scores below that would be lower than the 30th percentile, anybody above that would be above the 30th percentile, etc. Anybody who scores above 97 is in the top 20% or they are above 80% of the class. That's the way you kind of refer to the answer. Okay, so let's just take that writing off there. And that's printed out for you. So we had that already. Since there are 15 values, P30 is 30%, 15%, 4.5, take the fifth value of 92. P80 is 80% 15, which is 12. So you take the average of the 12th and the 13th value, which is 96, 98 divided by 2, 97. Okay, so I'm going to skip over these questions. They're there for you to do yourselves. Page 132 and 133. Question 134 and 7, just working on percentiles. Very, very straightforward. Let's carry on. Z scores, here they come again. Okay, now we've already met Z scores before. And if you think about what a Z score is, why is there need for Z scores? Well, the reason why we have Z scores in the first place is because we gather statistics from a v loads of various different areas. We gather statistics on body mass, we gather statistics on IQ, we gather statistics on height, we gather statistics on all kinds of shoe sizes, all kinds of different things, all right? So because our statistics are made up of different data measurements or different groups of measurements, they have to be standardized. So what we do is we take the measurements that we're given and we turn them into Z-scores so that they're all comparable. They're standardized to a Z-score, which hopefully is going to be on the normal curve. Now, as far as we're concerned in terms of curves and so on, we're only ever going to be dealing with the normal curve because the statistics we're going to deal with here would be statistics that are naturally distributed or normally distributed. So we get that lovely normal curve and then the Z-scores will tell us exactly where on that normal curve we are. And then by simple mathematics, we can work out the percentage of people above, the percentage of people below and so on. OK, so that's what the Z-score is used for. But just a little bit of history, a little bit of revision. A Z-score of a statistic is a way in which we can regulate the statistics. So instead of having grams and um, feet and maybe IQ scores and all that kind of stuff, we take the score, the data as it is, we turn them into a Z-score, which makes them comparable. It regulates them. Okay. So the normal distribution and the empirical rule. Now, I think we met this before, but the empirical rule is very a very simple rule that simply says the following. And here it is. For many large populations, the empirical rule provides an estimate of the approximate percentage of observations that are contained within one, two or three standard deviations of the mean. Now, if you can remember, when we were doing the normal distribution before, when we met it before, lovely normal distribution like that, okay? Who's in the middle? The three M's, the mean, the mode and the median, okay? So that's for a normal distribution and only for a normal distribution. The three M's coincide in the same place. Now, outside of that, we have one standard deviation like this. Then we have two standard deviations like this. And then we have three standard deviations like this. OK, and the deviation from the mean to the first. Um, sorry, I should say yeah, the deviation from the mean out to the first of our standard deviations and then out to our second and out to our third capture a certain amount of the population. Okay. Now, if you take the mean and one standard deviation either side of that, you manage to catch 
percent of the population okay if you take the mean and go two standard deviations either side of that you catch 95 percent of the population and if you take the mean and go three standard deviations either side of that you manage to catch 99.7 percent or 0.8 percent i think they've rounded up to now in the book but that's what the empirical rule simply says so the empirical rule is this going to one standard deviation either side of the mean catches 68 percent of the population going two standard deviations either side of the mean captures 95 percent of the population and going three standard deviations either side of the mean captures 99.7 percent of the population okay so what's the standard deviation the standard deviation is that thing i went through with you today in the live class on how you get on your calculator okay it's, it's a statistic that you calculate on your calculator that basically averages out the deviation of all the data points in a given set okay so that's what the empirical rule says now i have it done far more eloquently here in print so 68 percent of the population are held around the mean to one deviation either side plus or minus one deviation okay or one standard deviation to be more precise 95 percent of the population will be within two standard deviations of the mean and 99.7 percent will be within three standard deviations of the mean and that's all the empirical rule says it sounds like something very very posh and something very difficult but in fact it's quite easy it's only stating the obvious one standard deviation there's the mean okay one standard deviation 68 percent of the people are in there two 95 percent three 99.7 percent that's all the empirical rule says okay so here's an example chinese woman yao defen this is corona claims to be the world's tallest woman with a height of 233 centimeters women have heights with a mean of 159 centimeters and a standard deviation from the mean of 6.25 centimeters now let's just take a look at that first of all is height a naturally distributed uh, statistic yes it is it's a normal distribution so we're expecting here a normal distribution of height okay like that now what does that mean that means that in the middle of a normal distribution will be the mean okay and what are we told the mean is 159 with a standard deviation of the mean of 6.25 so let's go one standard deviation either side two standard deviations either side three standard deviations either side now this is one way of doing the question okay so 159 here let's go one standard deviation either side so you've got 159 plus 6.25 which brings me up to 165 so isn't here be 165.25 and then take 159 and take away 6.25 and that gives me 152 now straight away 152.75 straight away what does that mean that means that 68 percent of the chinese population are within heights of 152.75 centimeters and 165.25 centimeters she's here okay let's go one more let's go another standard deviation so 165.25 plus another standard deviation of 6.25 will bring me up to 171 Point five, and 152.75 minus 6.25 on the other side brings me down to 146.5 now what does that mean that means that if i go two standard deviations either side of the mean i'm catching 95 percent of the population and 95 percent of the chinese population according to these statistics will be in between 146 centimeters and 171 centimeters or 0.5 146.5 and 171.5 okay let's go is she there nope she's still way outside let's go again let's go three so we've got 171.5 and let's add on another standard deviation 6.25 and that brings me up to 177.75 and it brings me down 0.5 minus 6.25 it brings me all the way down to 140.25 wow okay what does that mean well now if i go three standard deviations either side that represents 99.7 percent of the population so now i know that 99 percent of the 0.7 percent of the pop chinese population have a height between 140.25 centimeters and 177.25 centimeters she's way outside that in fact she's way up here somewhere way up here 
all right so by a diagram alone what does it ask me what's it what's it telling me it's telling me that she's way off the scale is her height abnormal absolutely it's way outside the third standard deviation on the positive side so that means that she's not within 99.7 percent of the population in fact she is within the 0.3 percent of the population and in fact 0.3 percent of the population will be symmetrically distributed either side so she's actually in 0.01 uh, what was it 0.15 percent of the population that will be taller than 1.7 uh, sorry, 177.75. Think about that again. So all of here, see all that? That's all, let me just do this. That's all 99.7%, which means 0.3% is unaccounted for. The 0.3% is there and there, which makes that 0.15 each. So because she's up this end, she's within that 0.15. So her height brings her into 0.15% of the population, which is extremely rare, okay? Way off the scale, most unusual height. That's what we can defer from those statistics. Okay, let's see what it asks. What's the difference between her height and the mean? Now, the difference between her height and the mean is obviously 233 minus 159. The difference is 74. So she's 74, 233 minus the mean of 159 will give me 74 centimeters that's the difference okay how many standard deviations is the difference from the mean now think about that how many standard deviations is the difference from the mean well first of all what is a standard deviation one standard deviation is equal to 6.25 so therefore we want to find out how many deviations are there in 74 centimeters so all I've got to do is take the 74 divide it by the 6.25 and the answer comes out as well 11.84 standard deviations so she's actually 11.84 standard deviations above the mean okay that's incredible three standard deviations captures nearly the entire population she's 11.84 outside that's huge okay so that's 11.84 let's take that off Okay, let me take that here away. That's just a quick calculation because I have a question thing coming up underneath this. I need space. Okay, next question. Convert Yao. Convert Yao's height to a Z score. Remember the formula. Z equals the statistic under review minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Okay, what's the statistic under review? It's her height. What's the mean? It's 159. Well, hold on a second. Did we just work that up here a moment ago? Yes, we did. Over the standard deviation, 6.25. Okay, watch what happens here. You can see what's going to happen here, can't you? 233 minus 159. We already said that that was 74. Divided by 6.25. Oh, look, it's the same answer as above. It's 11.84. So that's what the Z score does. The Z score tells me how many standard deviations a given statistic is away from the mean okay we did it the long way around with these two but now that the z score formula is in it gives me exactly the same value as this one here which is the number of standard deviations that she is above the mean last question in statistical terms is her height usual or unusual well if she's 11.84 standard deviations away from the mean it's very unusual okay it's freaky she's way up there with the with the, the very very tall guys so it's, it's strange explain well she's 11.84 deviations away from the mean which is within 0.15 percent of the population which makes it way outside the norm that's it that's how you use the empirical rule okay so here's some more questions i'm going to throw at you and again page 134 136 carry on with those they are using z scores they're using the empirical rule and they're simply asking you to get back into the mode of using z scores that we did in probability so that you'll be ready to use them later on with the normal curve now i'm going to go to one more sampling variability um and then i'll stop with this it's the one i think i want to do i want to go to in here yet just give me one second now let's check and see no i don't actually no aha uh -huh. no i don't i'm going to stop there so i'm going to stop i'm going to do something very billy on its own okay so i'm going to stop with these questions simple as that page 134 136 along with go back along with the questions that are here also please 
just there, those ones, on percentiles. So I'm going to leave those for you to do. I want to take sampling variability on its own for the very simple reason that I think if we, and that's going to be our final thing. A sampling variability, just listen to the words, I'll kind of just introduce what I'm going to do the next day. The variation in samples. So if you go into a school and you take five students here and five students there and five students there and five students there, you've got four samples, okay? But if you look at the four samples, even the samples vary. So this is what we're going to look at now. For the very simple reason, and this is where statistics finish, we're never, ever, unless we're a government doing a census every four years, we are never going to involve the full population. So what we always do is we take a number of samples and those, th those samples then, if we have enough of them, should fall in line with general population trends. Okay, that's where I want to go to next. But in the meantime, I'm going to leave you with percentiles. I'm going to leave you with the empirical formula. Take the questions on the slides, work on them, and we will have a live class on this uh, on Monday of next week.